Street Fighters. Uh, to be honest with you, right. I, I remember I'm like, Dad, why, I, I, I'm playing tight end here. I like it, like defensive end. Why, why do you need me to kick and punt? Well, so when you have someone and you hit them, when you knock them down, you need to be able to kick their teeth out. Wow. So, so how, now how does that relate in the football thing? Well, I really want you to start getting extension. So when you take this person's head off in the in the in the streets, you know, I'm like, okay, pump, pass, and kick. Here I come. Right? <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. And asking my mom. I think I was about 14, mom, I gotta ask you a question. And she's like, what? I said, is, is, is wrestling fake? And she's like, why would you ask? Right, so Did we have the Von Erics around us all the time. You got Dusty around us all the time. Um, a Blackjack Mulligan, not as much, but around. Right. So, so, but the Von Erics the most. So my mom is watching the Von Erich family and watching us and both parents being known as really rough. I really was going to say there's such a parallel between Fritz and, and Bill. And, and let me tell you what, like, like my little brother, um, um, he set records at discus and shot put. Wow. Well, wow. You, let me so tell you. Jim, the Jim you know today that is probably the most incredible uh, announcer of all times, other than, you know, like I did love Gordon Soley, and I did love my dad announcing too, but Jim is just Jim. Um, Jim loved wrestling as much or more than any athlete, and he took it serious. But my dad was known for teaching, uh, for treating color commentary really rough. They are to be heard, not seen. They're never to put each other over. I mean, my dad said, the only thing you should be doing is finding out backgrounds about them. Uh, make up a story about their amateur wrestling or amateur Fair football Lord. people. So I never met Bret Hart. And I remember Bret Hart coming into me and speaking to me and saying, I'm here for you. And then he would meet me early places, Harley Race, would show up every town that he was on with Vader. I had to show up at the town at 10 or 11 o'clock. Vader would cuss me, saying, I hate you, I don't like you, but Harley wants me to come to this town early. Um, I had the same thing. Uh, yeah, well, I, Dusty pulled me aside and said that, you know, your push was not your dad's idea. Your push was more of Dusty Rhodes' idea. Now, where those went off the rail, not rail, is that true or not? Was Dusty, you know, because Dusty was a great friend of my father. Uh, I, I don't know. I will say this, though. I do remember a phone call that I made one time to someone I knew in New York. And it was about this dude named The Rock. And I don't know if you remember this, but uh, there's some people I knew up there, Jim Rosses and stuff like that. Right. And I was watching this kid being pushed down the throats of people and third generation, right? And the fans were not having it. And I did say to a particular person, oh my God, don't let what happened to me happen. You need to turn this guy heel, get him abused for a while and see what happens. I go up and see TNA. Half the, guy, half the guys I'd never seen. I mean, AJ Styles and Frankie Kizer. I mean, all these little guys. Right. The best wrestling I'd seen in forever. Forever. From the Crockett's? Uh, oh, Crockett? The Crockett sale? Oh, yeah, Crockett, yeah, he, he, he was a piece of shit. Yeah, he made a down payment, and, and uh, a, a very sizable down payment, and then choked on the rest. Your dad and never that, sued or anything? or? Yeah, he blamed it on, uh, and a matter of fact, I think Crockett blamed it on Dusty. You know, because at that time, that was when they were first starting to get the Lear Jets occasionally right. and all this. And, and my dad's the one, if you think about it, my dad was building Crockett's Federation when my dad broke out with the Crockett Cup. I mean, I mean, what what owner of a territory is that confident in what he does that he brings another one in to help promote it? Because that experience as D Dusty Rhodes the Booker at Mid South, right? And so my dad was, um, my dad loved Dusty, right? Him and uh, Dusty and him had just, they had a relationship, and it was a wild one. Cuss each other, uh, mad. Um, tear down the house, have differences, but loved each other. Uh, and I'll tell you something really funny. So, so Dusty, Texas fan, dad, Oklahoma, right? Booner, all this other stuff. So I remember, and don't, uh, don't quote me on this, but I think my dad bet him a grand on the game and, and by an Arn Anderson, Arn Anderson gift. And then he said, don't, he, Arn, Arn always had the best ways of just ripping you and being nice. Oh, he goes, don't worry about it, puppy. Because I'm going to beat the living shit out of you when I get back. And he did. And it was great. And, 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 and you know, what, what better thing could ever happen? I get put into a double angle with one of the greatest workers ever. 
You mentioned uh, earlier about your fight with Rick Rude. Did that have something to do with Rick Rude talking about beating up Kurt Henning, and then that's how you guys got into it? How do you know that? I know everything. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you do know everything. Yeah, that was a that was bad timing. Was when Sting, uh, which was Flash Gordon, right, and Hell would come. The Blade Runners. So now they're out. And my dad's like, this is what we're going to do with these guys. And I remember uh, Helwig, because he, he's like, my dad's like, I'll show you the gym. So I go to open the door of the gym, you know, and this is a really nice, like, this isn't just a gym. It's a sauna, because I don't need this heat. And I look over, and Sting goes, take care of it. And I look up, and Sting goes, well, Rude, what were you talking about? Well, I mean, what? He goes, like, I can get on all fours, and no one can turn me. And Sting goes, well, I bet Eric can, and now all the boys are this. And so he goes, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> he puts it down like this. I said, well, what do you want me to do? Do you want freestyle? Do you want me to get on? He goes, well, what's all the different styles? I go, well, Mr. Henning must have been good. I'm just asking. You want collegiate, freestyle, Greco? How do you want it? He's like, to get on the phone, making a call. And as I'm making a call, someone lifts me. He goes, now what would you do? And it was rude. It was dark. I dropped the phone, I hooked his leg, turned around, smashed his face a little bit into the post. I said that, and he goes, he, the, swear to God, this is why I knew we were friends. He goes, ah, you're good, man, you're good. And, uh, and he goes, fuck this, and he pushed off. He, he acted like everything was good. He walked outside. It wasn't three minutes later, Grizzly comes up to me and goes, we got a problem. I go, what? And he goes, well, I think Rude's shoulder's bad. And I go, so what's the problem? He goes, he was so mad after he talked to you, he walked out and hit a mark. He broke the guy's cleft palate. I mean, he broke his palate, and the guy ended up suing him like $70,000. I remember that. Wow. That was right after that whole incident. That, that had a killer night. Killer night. Yakuza, right? Yeah, yeah, it was a killer night. But I got to say, I'm like, Doc, really? He goes, yeah. He goes, it's, uh, it's mafia here, bro. And he goes, we could get killed at any time, but we're going to have fun doing it. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, Brian would love to do this arm drag, and he would jump just high as heck to, to do it. And there was young kids that sometimes they would go to do the arm drag, and they'd hit his hips, and they'd fall. Well, with me, he kept on going, jump higher, jump higher, jump higher, jump higher. We started getting that camarader uh, camaraderie. And, and Brian was one of those really smart guys. So he was another one that knew that I had tremendous heat and it would only be worse if he tried to take it off me. He just did it in a different way. He would challenge me in the ring to get better to take the heat off of me, which was really now, awesome. Man. I couldn't take it and I made a call to DDP. Asked him if he'd make a call to Eric Bischoff and see if it was okay if I beat Lex's brains out. Which is an odd thing to do. So here's the story. This is, let me, to tell you how bad I hated Lex, okay? If God had said, talked to me and said, hey, Eric, uh, I'm bringing you up to heaven. I'm going to give you 10 people, though, uh, if you want. You've been so good, can't come to heaven. Which God hopefully would never say that. But if he gave me that chance, I was willing to use all 10 people on Lex. <laughs> wow. It just so yeah. happened that Lex Luger was an extended stay. And so the, I come in and they go, oh my gosh, Eric Watts, all the wrestlers are here. I'm like, what do you mean all the wrestlers are here? And they're like, Lex Luger's here. I go, Lex Luger's here? I go, yeah, I go, where's he? One of the three suites. Would you like one? I go, yeah, right by his, or under his. I can, no. so, and I'm driving down, man, and I'm kind of like breaking up a little bit, crying. And I'm like, why am I crying? He's paralyzed, you know, but still is like, gosh, you know, I can't believe it. So I go in and say, Lawrence full, please. And they go, oh, okay. I said, what's his room number? 316. I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> so, so I go up, and it hit me when coming out of me. And I'm like, man, I, I, I can't lose it here. I got to be strong. But it, I, I was going to lose it. I could tell I was going to lose it. I'm like, hey, buddy. I'm getting closer to him. And he's got all the stuff, and he's just like, just, he's paralyzed. And he says, what's going on? I go, nothing, man, nothing, man. He goes, I heard you got the hips. I go, yeah, we got the hips for you. He goes, come here. I go, yeah. He goes, Pull my gown up. I'm like, what? <laughs> he goes, pull my gown up. I go, and my head's thinking like, is it one of those paralysis things? You itch, but you can't itch. He goes, w with me paralyzed? There's no pain medication or anything that needs to be in my body. They can cut me open, do whatever they want, no pain meds. He said, this is a gift from God, dude. They put in the hips and he grew three inches. Three inches, bro. That's how compressed his back and hips and everything really was. 
And okay. um, um, so I remember calling WWE and saying, I know I got a tryout, but I, I want to bring someone else. And they go, oh, don't do that. And I go, why? And they go, you're going to be judged as one. You both make it or none of you make it. And I'm like, okay, well, we'll both make it then. And, and, and Chad was only, he had a year and a half in the school, but not, not really. Stuff. I didn't know him. And when I came back, he said, uh, I got a contract for you. I want you to sign now. You, you, you guys are going to be big. Uh, I want you to sign this now. And the Vince that I had heard of and known, that wouldn't have been his personality. You know, it would have been, hey. Yeah. And so then I went old school, like my dad said. I said, wow, great opportunity. I said, look, you know. Shawn Michaels pulled me aside with Kevin and said, hey, Eric, you got your dad's number, which I said a stupid joke. I go, did you just ask me if I got my dad's number? <laughs> like, like, is that an odd thing that, yes, I do. My, it's my dad. So I gave him the number. He goes, no, have your dad call me. Let me give you my number. I'm like, why? And he goes, we, we need him up here. And I go, okay. Which I didn't, that was odd. Because now if I know that you know that we know and all that stuff. Called my dad, said, hey, Sean wants you to talk to him. Shortly after that conversation with Sean and Kevin, my dad came up and I was shipped to Memphis. I was going to ask you. I was, that was part of the, that's what I heard. Could you ask my dad next time you do an interview with him? Because <laughs> I think he screwed me. No, I'm just kidding. No, I was yeah. going to ask you. Is yeah. it true that your dad kind of killed your push and, and sent you down to Memphis? Did we have this conversation already? I've never asked my dad that. Why not? Um, and why do you think your dad would do it if he did do it? Well, different things happen at different times, you know, like as far as the business from where his dad was at and my dad. Because remember, my dad was selling out Madison Square Garden for his dad. My dad was pulling him down as an announcer. So he knew that connection, he knew that tie, and I think that he's got respect. I even remember hearing through the grapevine that my dad and Vince, the day my dad left, that they got into an argument. The baby faces were tired of being laid. It was like a Sean or someone said, Vince, I don't mind if he writes all the show, just not what we do at the end of it. And I, and I don't know whether it was Shawn Michaels or whoever. You might have heard it. Yeah, I remember this, this whole story, but I don't remember the exact details. I don't remember exact details, but from what I understand, my dad goes, well, I don't give an F. I'm either writing it or I'm not. And then Vince goes, but you got to understand something. It's my company. He goes, no, you're right. It is your company. So you should do the right thing. But if I'm your booker, I'm writing it. And Vince is basically, you're putting me in a rock and hard spot. He goes, no, I'm not. Fire me. You know, basically. I'm, I'm, those yeah. guys would have done anything on any given day to tear the house down, putting up the ring. Dreamer. How many times have I seen him doing the shirts and doing the this and doing the that? That was one of the coolest cult fiction type things I've ever seen. 100%. And then to see guys not hear about him not getting paid and stuff, whether it's Paulie or whoever else, no. And, and you know what? He went to my dad, right? And, and my dad saw him as an incredible athlete. He, his bumps and his moves were more crisp than anyone. He was way too small, but he was an athlete. My dad used him as a prime example. He goes, Eric, I took this athlete. Then I call my friend over here and say, hey, can you take him for six months a year? Then, and then my dad's still watching you, and then he's calling Vern, and he's calling Graham, and he's calling Von Erichs, and he's calling you know, whoever in Seattle, and he's sending them around, all around. And then I would see him three or four years later, and my dad would go, hey, remember this guy? I go, kind of, that's him now. Then I would be gone.